Hello everyone, I'm Jennifer, and I'm going to be talking about different use cases of creators bootstrapping their gigs using NFTs and crypto. I'm Jennifer, and I'm the co-founder of Mintgate. Okay, awesome. Um, I'm the co-founder of Mintgate, which is a platform that allows creators and communities to gate content using NFTs and social tokens. As well, I'm a Genesis founder of Alchemist DAO by Covalent, which is a community of data nerds that spun out of the Covalent community dev program. So can I have this really interesting dynamic where I'm working with creators as well as I know a lot about the analytics and dev side of NFTs and social tokens. The concept of traditional work is broken. People often have to rely on unstable work through the gig economy, which is sponsored by corporations. If you are lucky enough to have like a nine to five, you're also expected to work a lot more with less, like with less um, <laughs> rewards in less rewards um, in the work, as well as expected to work a lot more than just a typical nine to five. I actually work with a lot of people who uh, work in like uh, many different countries, and they don't even have a concept of a nine to five or traditional or traditional work. And we often saw during the pandemic that a lot of people, like work is actually very unstable. Millions of people lost their jobs and had to wait for weeks or months for unemployment claims by the, from the government, as well as lots of contractors and corporations often like were fired from their positions at will. So people realized that they really need to diversify their incomes with meaningful gigs. They need to have like more paths and avenues for them to make money. But communities are not really prepared to help. There really isn't a sponsorship structure for an individual, especially if you're not like really well known or have a major following. And grants are really rigged and they're also unpredictable and unexpected. So you can help write hundreds of grants and not be accepted to anyone because the acceptance rate is so low. And so they're really unpredictable and you don't really know when you're able to get them and the, like, the acceptance rate is really low. And most communities, from your small development meetup to your book club, communities that you contribute to usually don't have funds because the funds that they have to rely on are not reliable, such as you know, grants or sponsorships. And so can NFTs and crypto really help? NFTs act as reputations of meaning. NFTs can really help enable like communities coming together as well as different ways for creators to monetize. So no, NFTs are not just JPEGs. There actually are more use cases for NFTs. For example, social tokens can be used as rewards. The first example that I have up is a screenshot of a Discord of Harrison First, a Swedish musician. And you can buy his first token in order to access his music. But also, if you're one of the most active users in his Discord, you can also earn first tokens to access his music. So you don't necessarily need to just be someone who has a lot of money who can buy music, but you can also be an active contributor, an active super fan of his in order to just be able to earn more exclusive music. The next example is with Forefront, which is a publication uh, for like thought knowledge on social tokens. And you can earn 109 Forefront tokens for every accepted piece for the publication. They are a DAO structure, and we've heard from other DAOs, such as Moloch DAO, where you can create, where you can like join projects and earn tokens, as well as Alchemist DAO, the DAO that I'm part of. You can earn tokens for hosting workshops, cr like creating projects on data on the blockchain. Next example that I have is Green. She is a DJ based in New Orleans, and you can collect tokens, like green tokens, just by being active in her, in her Discord, as well as playing games in her Discord. So like, tokens can also just be a, a really fun way to get people really involved in your community as well. Another use case is token gating can be a value add to 
value add and also can provide exclusive content. So at Mintgate, what you can do is you can create token gated links of any NFTs and social tokens. So what you can do is you can put in a YouTube or a SoundCloud link and then just put in the NFT or social token that you want to gate it with. And then someone who owns that NFT or social token can then have exclusive access to that content. So content creators uh, that you know, have exclusive content such as YouTube videos or SoundCloud can um, gate, like can really require someone to buy an NFT in order to access that content. Think of NFTs as access passes. But we see in like many variety of different use cases from insurance companies gating insurance documents. You need to have, hold an NFT in order to access an insurance document just as a more secure way to access content. Everything also from a DAO gating DAO resources, you need to own the social token or NFT in order to access DAO resources. And so we see in a gamut of use cases. And with token gating, we're seeing a new evolution of media assets. For example, let's take the book. So if you go down to like Powell's books and like look at any of the books, you just see like, you know, books with like covers and like pages, like just like your typical book that you've always read um, when you were like little. And like the book itself, it hasn't really evolved, you know, like for hundreds of years. But with token gating and NFTs, the book can actually really evolve to being another type of media asset. WIP Publishing and Book Vaults are two NFT publishing companies that are re re revolutioning the way that we think of a book. So in addition to buying an NFT, which is like the cover of the book, and then behind it, there's a PDF of the book, they can also token gate other content with the NFT, such as illustrations. So that means like the illustrator can also monetize on their content, or maps, or one-on-one -on -one calls with creators, with, with the author. This really enables authors to really rethink what the book is and how they can even monetize their work, not just with their writing, but just with actual community that really wants you know, to be participate in building a community for their book. NFTs are also revolutionizing how the event space and education space um, is working as well. So for example, Hisinju required you guys to claim an NFT in order to access this event. Uh, and you guys can now shill that NFT and just say that you're at ETH Portland. So there's a concept of POAPs, which is just a NFT that proves that you were at you know, a certain place or at a certain event, really can help en enrich like, your resume and really show that you, know, you were involved in different um, workshops or different uh, live events, as well as earning NFTs you know, for any skills or education that you know, have pursued. For example, let's just say that um, you have like read like a book, uh, like read a book, and then you need an NFT in order to access that book. In the future, you can think of, you know, maybe you connect your wallet in order to access that book, and then maybe you can track like how long like your wallet was connected, or how many times did you try to connect your your uh, your wallet in order to read that book, and as a result, like it maybe can track just like how many, like actually can track like how many times like you were engaging with that book and if you actually really read it. Or you can get an NFT for, you know, answering a couple of questions um, about that book. And then if you get enough questions uh, answered correctly, maybe get an NFT. So as a result, like in the future, we really envision like your wallet will really show like how you are involved in many communities. And as a result, it really will shape how educate, like how we look at educational credentials. Because right now, you guys you know, have, may have a degree, but there are so many people out there who don't have a degree, who did a lot of self-teaching, that you know, aren't really getting um, recognition for all that work that they put in um, through like self self teaching or uh, just like through like attending a lot of these events, right? Because yeah, your like your learning doesn't stop with your degree, as you guys can see here. So with token gaining of NFTs, 
content creators can almost monetize on anything. So just going back to the example of authors, it's not just their writing, but now they can token gate illustrations. They can tie in the illustrator. They can tie in, you know, one, they can have like one-on-one -on -one calls with their super fans. They can, you know, talk about like how they created, uh, like what was inspired, uh, what inspired them to write the book as, you know, behind the scenes like content. So it really enables creators to almost monetize on anything that they traditionally wouldn't have in the past, as well as it enables anyone to be a content creator. So when you think of NFTs, you guys probably think like you need to be like, an amazing artist just to create like an NFT, but you can just you know, create a simple image and then behind it, it can be anything as if you're a dev, like a tutorial to, to, like, to any like, uh, a tech, like tech technology. And then, or uh, you can also just you know, be a UX designer and maybe like, you have like, notes on how to be like, a better UX designer or you can be, or you can be like a musician, and then you have like music behind your NFTs. And with that, like NFTs and social tokens can really structure the payment of work. So now that you can be paid with NFTs and social tokens, you can really think about like how, you, like how like people are going to be paid differently. So instead of having a handful of patrons, so instead of having millions of viewers, you can have a handful of patrons instead. So this first, first one here is a, an independent creator who created NFT and sold it for 15.5 ETH, which last night was about no, 67,000, like $67,000. And then the next one is a YouTube video that actually earned the same amount of revenue, but this YouTube video had to be viewed 48 million times in order to earn that revenue. So this is an independent creator. And if you want to guess like which video that is, that's actually um, a K-pop video of, <laughs> uh, of um, a K-pop group that is signed with one of like, the largest um, agencies in South Korea. So you can imagine you being independent or are you being signed with a major agency in South Korea and having to just do a lot of promotions, um, you know, being restricted and also really almost earning the same money, even maybe even less because there's like more cuts to um, more people uh, in like the, the cycle. So we're bringing back, NFTs really bring back the idea of the Renaissance era where you only really need one patron or a handful of patrons in order to feel your work. And that was really powerful because you don't necessarily need millions of fans and try to like do a whole bunch of work in order just to gain millions of fans, but you can only have one super fan. And as a result, that really enables creators to have a niche that maybe only one or two people are, or a handful of people are interested in instead of you know, the masses. And that really enables kind of like more even intellectual curiosity because it enables like people to niche down um, and instead of just uh, appealing to the masses. One other use case uh, that uh, we're seeing is this idea of immutable crowdfunding via NFTs. So you can sell, so you can crowdfund your next project using NFTs, and. Uh, and like if you end up, you know, for example, like let's say like you want to publish a movie and you sell NFTs in order to crowdfund that movie, like once you actually finish that movie, you can then add it as you know, unlockable content to that NFT. So anyone who like bought the NFTs in order to uh, fund your work can access that movie later on. So it's kind of like an immutable way to handle crowdfunding. Uh, so like our vision is eventually users will be able, so eventually uh, users, like once someone buys an NFT and if there's you know, any unlock, and then in the future, is there any unlockable content, uh, someone can actually be notified that there is like unlockable content um, that was added to the NFT and then people can you know, see like what, what content like you have created you know, after like so, someone has bought your NFT and has funded your work. And also, like in the future, um, I think that uh, there will be like smart contracts that can handle this, uh, where like if you don't deliver on 
crowdfunding, you like whoever like bought those NFTs will be reimbursed back the um, ETH or on the uh, social like the social tokens that they bought it with. Another use case that we're seeing is the idea of community creation. So there are a lot of no code white label NFT marketplace solutions where you can spin up your own NFT marketplace and allow uh, certain people to mint on those NFT marketplaces. So at Mintgate, we actually allow you to do this um, where you can you know, create your own uh, version of mintgate.app. But in the future, like what we really see is we see cr like creators and communities not only spinning up these like NFT marketplaces on their own, but also really enabling uh, people to tra transact with their um, social tokens or to redeem an NFT uh, for another NFT or redeem an NFT for actual physical goods. And the, we're seeing a lot of use cases around that, not just like on our white labels, but other um, white label sites, white label sites um, as well. In addition, I, in addition, other platforms and such as OpenSea are now being more open to allowing creators or communities to transact in their social tokens. For example, recently you can buy um, NFTs on OpenSea using creator coins created by Rally. And with this, we're now, if you're a part of a lot of different communities, you can actually have a diversification of assets, which really protect you from really, which really would protect you from any fr from any like economic challenges or like the risks of fiat um, crashing. So, before, um, if you were to like, so before, like if you had like five gigs, right? Um, you were you had like a nine to five, and then maybe you worked like another job, and then another job, um, and you got all in fiat. If US dollar crash, then pretty much all your life savings would crash. But now we're seeing that you know, if you're part of one community, for example, you're part of Friends with Benefits, and then you're part of another community, such as you know, Alchemist DAO, you get covalent tokens, you can really diversify your portfolio of what you can earn. And each of these tokens you know, have a different value, have a different community that's behind it. And instead of seeing like, your whole portfolio ca crash because you all have it in just like one like type of money. Like if one of the tokens crash, like you'll still be okay because you have like other tokens. So we really see that in the future, like people will have um, like like dozens of tokens or hundreds of tokens that that they invested in or that you know that they contributed to, and it really helps diversify their portfolios. So with NFTs and social tokens, it really enables creators and people who work to ultimately be financially independent without really trying. So right now in our systems, we really require, you know, if you want to be financially independent, you need to go through, go to uh, a financial advisor, just talk to them about like what you can invest in, with your fiat, whether it's stocks, bonds, um, other currencies. But now like we're with NFTs and social tokens, we can have people do that immediately just by joining many different communities. And so with that, how do we scale this more? There are many challenges, there are many different challenges for creators and, and there are many different challenges for creators still on how like they can scale up their operations. So with this, I want you guys to think about like how can we get you know, more creators to be able to get, you know, get their NFT storefronts out there as well as you know, how, can they, how can they join a lot more communities when there's so much noise around them. And you guys uh, can actually now claim an NFT like Po app, um, and you actually can see this kind of live and how this all works with like token gated content. So you can claim like a free Polygon NFT like by Unlock Protocol, which um, Amber Case uh, did talk about like Unlock Protocol very recently. And then yeah, you can claim a Polygon NFT, 
And what you can do with this QR code is in order to access my slide deck, um, you must confirm your ownership um, using, like, using Mintgate. And so that's just already the power of, hey, you guys were here, and then now you guys can access my slide deck. So just think about like, all the possibilities that you guys can think of with token gating. Awesome. Well, thank you so much uh, for, um, yeah, thank you so much for uh, just like learning about you know, how like, creators you know, have been able to bootstrap their, NF bootstrap their gigs using NFTs and social tokens. Um, I did leave some time for uh, Q&A as well, but in the meantime, if you want to contact me, I'm on Twitter as well as on email. Thank you. Anyone have any questions? Yes. Could you go back to the slide uh, message after the QR code? Yeah, code. Yes. Oh, you need me to stop away? Yes. Yeah, so the question was, you know, have we ever thought about like the volatility of income uh, due to like you know people like earning like different social tokens? Yeah, we've thought about like we thought about that um, and it's been really challenging um, just thinking about like how we would like solve that issue, um, whether you know it's you no know, staking um, some of those tokens or um, having people just be able to uh, deposit some of those tokens and then um, like deposit some of those tokens and transfer them as stable tokens, like a certain percentage of them as stable tokens. Um, though like those are probably the two like ways that we've we thought like people people can handle like that issue. Uh, but yeah, that's it's definitely like a challenging like it's definitely challenging for sure uh, when you when there's like fatal like fatality in some of the social tokens. Yes. Are yes, POAPs like POAPs are tradable, but you can have code in the smart contract where uh, you like they're not tradable. So um, that's actually a really good point because uh, like you don't want to earn a POAP and don't you know, be at, so for example, be at Eve Portland and then just be able to transfer that to someone else that wasn't at Eve Portland. So there are ways um, to handle that like in a smart contract uh, where like you won't be able um, to, yeah, where you won't be able to like transfer them. Yeah, so there are like ways of like non-transferable, non-transferable -transfer, yeah, NFTs, but there's also um, other concepts such as like you can burn an NFT, like actually erase an NFT um, and there's like, or like erase an NFT, for example. There's like use cases where um, people, like for example, if there's like a deadline to you know, enter in a course or to review like an, an article, what the, what people have done in the past is they have like this burnable NFT where you must like you know read this book or and, and lock um, content behind it, and you need to read this book um, or you know, finish this course uh, by a certain amount of time. And then, you know, and then after a certain amount of time, it actually disappears from your wallet. And so like, if you don't meet that deadline, you don't own that entity. Um, another thing that we've thought about too is like if you do meet that meet that deadline, you, you'll keep the NFT. Uh, we're still thinking about like how like that works from a, techni from a technical standpoint.